Hello and welcome to Hixie Studio. In this video I'm going to show you how to make this card and I'm using um, this die from the Romantic Roses collection by Precious Mariecki. This one's called Rose Circle. There are um, a few others in the range as well so have a look on the the, uh, the channel because I've got some videos with those but this one we're just going to use this die and um, we're going to use it to although it's like a cut out die we're going to use it to cut into the base card so you can see that we've got this I've got a piece of um, vellum here that you can see through to the back you could add a little sentiment there or sentiment on here so I'm going to show you how to do all of that including um, a little bit of inking for the, the, the flowers so what you get is a um, is the circle uh, die, it's a bit, kind of like a wreath, I suppose. Um, and then you get this little one as well. Now, because I, I've cut it out quite a lot of time, so you know, you it does take a little bit of time. Um, <clears throat> but you know, it, it's up to you whether you want to do it or not. Um, well, also there are uh, one of the others. I think I can't remember what it's called. There's one that's like a corner that I've used as an easel card before that also has a couple of these in so if you have that one you can sort of double up on cutting your your roses and leaves okay so I have um a card here and this is uh ten and a half by five and a quarter okay and I found that was the sort of perfect uh size for an army to get this it in with a, with a nice border around okay so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to score my card at five and a quarter but I'm not going to I'm not going to fold and burnish it yet because we're going to run this through the machine so the score line is there so I'm just going to work out where I want to put this um if you want to be you know fairly exact you could put like a pencil cross to find where the middle is and line it up like that oh there is one thing i will say i've just because i've just seen this little bit on the die here this does come attached so we're in the pack it's attached here and here okay now if you want you can leave it attached but personally i don't like that so i just use um and we get dolls like this, it's like wire cutters just to cut those off. Word of warning though is that these can then be a little bit sharp, so you just need to be aware, you know, and mind your fingers on them. But it's a case of personal preference, you don't have to cut them off, you could cut it um with it. But if you're gonna do like I've done with all of these roses, you're not really gonna want to cut that that many times. So it swings and roundabouts. Um Okay, so let's uh, place this down like so, and I'm going to get some tape. Now with this one, um, all I'm wanting, I'm just going to move it slightly to the right. All I'm wanting out of this one is for it to cut out. I'm not too if worried whether I get all the bits in the middle cut because it, it's not needed for this part. So I'm going to um as ever start with um sort of a minimal um pressure. Now my plate is starting to dip and bow so that in some places I won't get as much pressure as others. So I've turned it that way and I'm putting it on that, that raised bit and we'll see how we go. But like I say, for this one, as long as that out part, then that's all I need for this. Um, but for, uh, we're going to cut it again out of um, the green. So we might need a bit more pressure for it for then. Let's put that through and see how we've done. So no, it hasn't. You can see it's it's happily cut sort of down the sides, but this top and bottom end not really liked and there's not a lot I can do about that in terms of turning it because obviously I'm cutting it out of the the card base so I will add in I'm actually going to add in a couple of pieces of card and we'll see if that 
That is enough. If not, we'll remove those and try with the uh, the magnetic shim. I mean, machines these days come with all these mats, but sometimes a good old fashioned sticking a piece of card in is all you really need. Um, and you will know your machine, you will know it's sort of foibles like this one. I know um, because the plate is a bit bowed, I have to be a bit careful. Now, I'm just going to check that the outside edge is cut. I can still see here, this isn't, wouldn't be cut enough if I wanted this as a piece, um, but it's cut enough to, to remove the app from the outside. That's tape. Yes, that's tape. So I'm I'm going to go with that for this particular cut because that's all I need. So we'll remove the tape. And I just put the two pieces in there. So that's that's all I need from this. So, um. But we do need to remove this from the die because we need it again. But I, I'm going to, before I do that, is to now fold and just burnish that fold. Right, so, right, so let's uh, get this out of the die so that we can then cut our um, thumb green. Now, what I've done because um, I'm putting this into uh, an aperture, you know, there's nothing on the back. That's why we're going to need to stick something there. Um, but what I did is I I cut two. Let's see, I'm just I'm not, as I said, I'm not too worried about this bit. So uh, don't pull that out. Um, what I've done is I've cut it twice for here. I cut it twice in green. For this this front bit and again to put one in at the back so in all in all i've cut it three times out of the the green card it's just because there's some really um little fiddly bits that i'm trying to put back in and it can um it can be a little bit uh well it adds strength to add the extra layer it just gives it that extra bit of strength so you can see there's some bits that I still need to poke through. I'm going to need to do this because we need the die again. And if you don't take, I know, I, I know myself, I sound like a broken record, but if, if you've not watched other the, the, of my videos, you may not have heard me say that, you know, if you don't take these little bits out, when you come to cut again, the pressure will be different in this area and you won't get a good clean cut. So it's always important to make sure you've got all those little bits out um, before you cut again. So we're going to cut, cut this now out of the green. And now this time we need to make sure that it cuts uh, everything out. So we're going to go back with, um, without the card because this time, if needs be, I can, um, I can rotate. Right, so let's put that through and we'll see how that's cut. And, and because it's also um, a different weight of card, so it might make cut a lot easier. Um, so it, just, it does depend. This is um, uh, Crafters Companion, what they used to call stamping card, what they now call their multi purpose card. And that's a 300 BSM and my green card is not. But it's still done the same thing. So you can see it's cut the two sides, but it's not cut there. So the first thing we're going to try is just to rotate it like that. And put that back in. Okay. And just be careful with this. I was doing my samples and um this is one I was working on and I went out shopping and <laughs> I got into the shop. This was attached to my um, the magnet on the cover of my phone. I was like, oh my goodness, I could have lost that and would never have found it. Okay, so I'm looking here. This is still not cut enough. So 
what we're going to do, I'm going to put it through that way, but I'm going to put large shim in this time and we'll see how we go. Because I need those little bits to come out, so we need to make sure they're all cut. Um, there are lots of little bits in this guy. Um, it is quite an intricate little thing. Right, so the outside's come off, so let's just take that off for the moment. And I'm just having a look. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try with my pokey tool. Now, those bits are not wanting to come out very well, so we will. We will throw the whole shebang at it and we will put the magnetic with it just so that we get it cut all the way through. It is worth a try because I know what will happen now that, that my plates will bow a little bit, but you know, they love it. They love it. You can hear it working a bit harder there with the. Whee. Yeah, I can see now that that's cut nicely. So let's put that to the side. Shim. Just off my bits of tape. And then I'm going to run the dye brush over it before I try and take it out. You can see all these bits are just taken out. And you can see there's lots of them. Nearly all of the little holes that you can see on the back of the die are where bits have been cut out. So, a few little bits, of them. just have to poke those out in a minute. So let's uh, go from that leaf, I think. That's nice. Strong bit to grab, so it's a case of just gently easing it out because uh, there are some quite filigree parts. So, just one little bit stuck there. I think we've done it. Bar. In. And then we'll just have a look on the actual cutout. So I think there's a little bit there. I think everything else is out of the bomb now. Okay. So what you would need to do is you need to cut out another two of these and then you would glue two of them together. I have already done one uh, which I'll show you in a moment um, but what I want to show you next is the, the roses. Now um, I'll show you what I did but actually I probably would say for the roses you don't need to bother because it, it didn't seem to make much of a difference. Um, I used some card, some of the, the Crafters Companion, the multi-purpose card and what I wanted to try to do, and it didn't work, but I'll tell you how I how, how I it, blah, 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 how I attempted it. I wanted um, a bit more of a, a variegated kind of colour, um, so I kind of used three three colours um, of the pink, but actually because it's so small and yeah, it didn't really show. It showed a bit better. You can see kind of here and here. With the leaves and I used three different greens there um, but you know I'll show you what I did but it, you might not want to to worry too much with particularly with the roses um, it would work probably a lot better if you've got some larger flowers or, or leaves it would show up a lot a lot clearer but anyway so let's grab my pinky mat and uh, let's start with the pink my Brushes. So what I've got is I've got Tattered Rose, I've got Saltwater Taffy which is the latest colour out and then 
worn lipstick so they're all nice um this saltwater taffy has been a really gr great addition literally into this this kind of uh color blend it was the one we needed in the middle so tim holtz is very good at, at filling in those sort of colors even sometimes even when you don't really know that you need them and then they appear and think oh, yeah. so what i did was I started with, the, <coughs> excuse me, the lighter colour and I used that to, to cover the whole of the piece. Now, although you're cutting out quite a few, um, you don't, because they're so small, you don't really need a huge amount uh, of card. Now you can see I'm not worrying, apart from getting some nice little inky fingers on it, I'm not worrying about it being a really smooth uh, blend because that was kind of what I was trying to go for was the more, you know, the variegated colour. I mean, when you look at roses or any flower, they aren't just one colour. They are sort of, um, you know, variations of So That's the tattered rose. I don't know why I'm putting the lid on that because I want that in a minute to blend in with the water. See, if I take the lids off, you can see, you can see they are a really lovely sort of gradation of, of, um, of the of really that nice peachy pink. So saltwater taffy, and again, I'm just, I'm not attempting even to go over all of it. And in fact, I'm probably being less, um, doing it probably doing it better this time knowing that it didn't quite work for me last time so literally uh like that and then back with the um uh the tattered rose just to give it a little bit of a blend okay and then same thing with the worn lipstick which is the darker one just a few little bits as you can see, it's hard to get tiny bits. So that rose is so small that unless you deliberately place it on, you know, overlapping, it's not going to work. So this is a technique that I would probably just keep for larger flowers in future, not for these little ones. But I wanted to just show you what, what I was attempting to achieve. So that's that's the pink. In fact, if I show you, I cut mine into strips. You can see I blended a lot more, um, which is probably why it didn't work so much for me. So this probably you get a, a better variation than I did on the original. Right. So let's put those colours away for the moment, and then I did a similar thing with the green for uh, the leaves. So. This time I had shabby shutters and ooh, crushed olive and there isn't really a darker of this kind of, um, I don't know, olivey colour I suppose. Um, so I've gone with rustic wilderness but uh, these two look really good together and this one just has a little bit of darkness now. Oh, that's my, um, my scrappy piece. Okay, so just um literally the same process the card is covered with the lighter color this one being shabby shutters i suppose just thinking about it that you could twisted citron would be in this kind of color range maybe start with a twisted citron and then up and have crushed olive as the darker one but Right, so there's my um, uh, shabby cutters. So this is crushed olive. And just like I did with the, um, the pink, it's just bits and pieces here and there. And then get my um, brush back and just blend it out a bit. I'm using, I know it's, this bit of card's bigger than this, but just trying to save my um of getting too much ink on my fingers and then putting it everywhere. And then uh this is my rustic wilderness and 
Yeah, it needs to be silicone. And I think it, I think because because it didn't work last time again, I'm I'm probably adjusting my technique. And this one probably would look more effective. It's definitely a lot lighter. I'm gonna get some more of the rustic wood and see. It is it again, it's one of those things that would probably um well, not probably it will because I've done it on other cards. It works better with a larger um a larger die. And I'll show you again that how knowing what happened last time has, has made me do this differently because that is what I ended up with last time. So far too much, I think, of the rustic wilderness over the top and you couldn't see through. So anyway, that's that's the idea, and it's it's something that you can use on well not just on your florals, but any of your um but inky backgrounds that you're going to die cut from just to give a little bit more um interest. Okie cokey. So ooh, I'm gonna put that over there. Put that away for now. So I am going to actually use these ones because I already have some cut out, and what I don't want to do is, is introduce a completely different like colour scheme uh when I have almost finished um cutting. So let me just go and have a count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fifteen. So you need to cut cut fifteen times, but it's not unfortunately, it's not just fifteen of these. You're gonna to need to cut probably a similar amount of, of these. Um I love my Gemini. I you know, this is the one I've got here uh, in the studio, I've got one at home. However, there's something like this with a little dial like this. If you've got one of those little hand crank ones, which is what I use at home, it just gives you um it's just quicker. You can sit sit at your desk rather than having to keep feeding things through. So I will cut, I'm gonna cut one out of the uh pink and one out of the um the green just to show you. I think I'm gonna go with that. Nice kind of raised bit on my platform. Uh, oh, <laughs> I got that out to shim. I don't know if I put it in, so we'll see how we go. See, not convinced that those little middle bit, yes, they will. Come on, really much they will. We'll go with it as I need to do another one anyway. Let's take that off. Okay, well. Not. And I'm this one, I think. I'm just gonna get my um go underneath. And believe <clears throat> believe I don't need uh out of pink. But uh I will just pop them out. So you can always keep those for another project. Another Another way you could do it um, is you can cut them out of white, white and then ink. I mean, that might be quick if you don't have the time. Sometimes it's just the patience, isn't it? It's just, oh, I need to crank that through. I don't know how many times. There we go. There we are. Could probably have done with just a little bit more pressure on that if I'd have put the... Um, yeah, uh, shim in that I had intended to, then it come out better. We can live with that. Like so. Oh, come on. I'm gonna go from the back and pull that one. There. No. Oh, fiddly, fiddly, fiddly. Right, so let's let's do the green and this time let's put the shim in. 
and uh, see. Hopefully, that will make the difference that we need. Put that here again. You see, I've got some ink on here, so if I'm in this step, going to just spray and wipe that up. So you can see that just with that, that little card chin, that has cut a lot better. The same weight card, um, just that one little uh, extra card shim has made all the difference. So that's just, is it going to come out? No, I don't think it's got them all out. And then again, just get my paper tool in underneath, and that's come out. So I don't need, I don't need the flower. And but I do want the leaves, so let's put it all in those and then oh, put them out. Put them out as one, and then there's the other. Right, so if those are one lot of don'ts, I'm going to take a moment put those in the bin. So like I said, you'll need to cut out multiples of these. You need to cut out three of these. Um, we've already now cut into the card, so we now need to see how it all comes together. So let's have a look at this first. So here I've got two stuck together. And I've already started to put the, the roses and the leaves on. So I've still got some bits here. I'm just going to grab a piece of paper. And put that down. And I'm going to take this fine glue. Just let it run to the tip before I start squeezing. So what I'm going to do... Oh, I've got a leaf here that I've missed. Um, here are my leaves and my uh, other roses hopefully good enough put them out and you can see what we're doing i don't think we've got plenty so i'm going to use see i've missed this um little leaf here so i'm just going to put some glue there and i found it was much easier to do it this way round, um, particularly with the leaves, I don't know why I did the roses, the, because the leaves are the things that are going down first, so that they'll kind of sit underneath. Okay, so if I got all the leaves, three there, one there, two there, and one there. So grab my um, tweezers now. Some of the ones on here are, um, they don't kind of quite match up with these, but I'm not too bothered. I've kind of just gone with roughly the right size and roughly the right orientation of um, the leaf. Uh, so you can kind of just um, do it like this. You want the leaf, so that one's going to go on there. What do I need? Uh, I need a big one there. Is it up there? It doesn't matter if they're not exactly over the top either. I'm going to use a small one in there as I obviously forgot to put one in that would sit underneath, but we can get one there. And another little one we shall do. Um, I'm sure I have more than three roses now. Oh, I did. Oh, having a slight um, minute there over the number of roses. I'm going to stick that one on there. Okay, so I've got a bit of blue on that rose, but I'm going to add a little bit um, there. 
And again, so I'm going to go over here because the, the rose is going to sit on top of that. Um, oh, I've missed a, a leaf there. Well, let's get another leaf. I don't have another little one, so I'll put a big one there. Like so. And then I'll put some blue on the top of that bit there. And then we've got our roses. So one's going to go there. Again, I'm not worrying as to whether they're completely oriented the right way um because it doesn't really it doesn't really matter it just gives you a guide as to where they should go okay so that's that's the wreath done so i've got this this double um double strength if you like plus i've got one that's going to go in the back okay so I'll put that to one side for the moment don't need those leaves um and let's have a look at the other bit. So I have um, a piece of um, patterned paper. Now the reason I haven't covered um, the whole is that this was um, a, not a scrap. I was trying to use some stuff for my scrap box and um, that was just a perfect pattern. So I've just used a little bit for the middle. I'm not gonna place that down until we've got everything else in. So I have, uh, a piece whoops, of um, vellum which will fit here. Now we all know with vellum when you try and stick vellum you can see the glue through. So what I've done, I have, this is a, a, a large nesting square but I haven't used it to cut anything out. What I've done is I actually drew round it on a piece of like, oh extra roses that's where they went, um, on a piece of white card I just drew around the inside and drew around the outside and then used um, my trimmer to cut the outside.